Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Nakatomi Desk Kitchen. And today we are making one of my favorite, favorite kind of snacky, sometimes it's dinner, sometimes it's lunch, sometimes it's just a midday snack. Today we're making okonomiyaki, which in Japanese literally translates to cook as you like. It's not really a cook as you like for every single ingredient in this dish. It really means um, the toppings. So it's basically a cabbage pancake, <laughs> which I know sounds kind of different from like what you would normally consider a pancake. Um, it's definitely savory, um, but the okonomi part comes from uh, whether you want to put like pork belly slices on it or bacon or chicken or shrimp. And that's where the okonomi comes from. It's like you go to an okonomiyaki restaurant and you can have an order from the menu. The base is the same. It's the toppings that you get to choose from. Today we're actually going to make something using bacon, so it's going to be super, super easy and easy to find all the ingredients. So let's get started. We are going to start with, so this recipe is for one or two pancakes. So, you know, two for yourself kind of can be a little heavy, um, but uh, I think you and one other person, or you can kind of keep the batter aside and make a second pancake later. So. I have half a cup of just regular all-purpose flour here, and to that we're going to add just a eighth of a teaspoon, so half of a quarter teaspoon. <laughs> I don't have an eighth teaspoon measurement, I should probably get one. Um, goes in there. A eighth of a teaspoon of dashi powder, which is our bonito, um, bonito and kombu, so um, bonito fish and kombu seaweed uh, put together to make a basic broth um, powder, kind of like a consomme powder. Um, for uh, Japanese broths, so it's a seafood based broth. And we are also going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And to be honest, in terms of dry ingredients, that's all it is, right? But here's where the Japanese kind of flavor profile comes in, is you want to get a pancake that's fluffy. You don't want like a flat, it's not like a Chinese scallion pancake, right? So it's, um, you're looking for something that's actually got a little bit of lift. So the bake, that's why the baking powder's in here. If you, have a hard time finding this next ingredient um, you can actually leave it out and maybe add just like an extra eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder so you're going to increase the um, the baking powder from a eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon and that is nagaimo nagaimo has the same kind of slimy texture as like Hawaiian poi. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, but it's basically a root vegetable that you can slice into tiny little slices and turn it into a salad, um, kind of like jicama. Um, but it has kind of like this kind of slimy texture to it. In Japanese cooking, one of the most common uses for nagaimo is to turn it into a slurry. Um, and then you can have it, have it over a bowl of rice, or you can um, <laughs> include it into dishes like okonomiyaki. And that is kind of the traditional mes method of using nagaimo. So um, I am going to take a this is about three ounces. So we're going to take three ounce kind of peeled cut piece and this is a traditional Japanese grater um, super super cheap it's like a couple of bucks um, and it's a little bit different from a regular kind of box grater in that it's it's got uh, finer teeth to it 
and it's meant for things like ginger and things like nagaimo, things that have um, a lot of fiber, but um, uh, you don't necessarily want the fiber. You want, like in ginger, you would want the juice. In nagaimo, you would want this kind of like slurry stuff. So super, super easy to use. And kind of different from a box grater, there's nothing on the back, so there's nothing that comes out of a grater like this. And you can tell already it's, you know, it's kind of slimy. Kind of like the texture of like okra. Um, but uh, sl slimy foods in Japan are kind of like a health food. So things like natto, which is like a fermented soybean, nagaimo, um, okra. Uh, is actually also very popular in Japan. And the slimy texture is supposed to help you with your digestion and to kind of keep your um, your blood vessels healthy, uh, which I don't know how that works, but I think it's more about the, the, um, the nutrients that are inside these vegetables that make it slimy to actually help you, um, I don't know, process it in a healthy way. It, because it's slimy, it gets kind of slippery. But you do have to peel it because I don't, I don't think you could, I don't think you can use the skin of nagaimo. Um, so you just have to risk, you know, having slimy hands for a little bit. Now, for some people, the slimy um, when you when you make the slimy stuff out of nagaimo, your skin can actually get irritated and get itchy. Um, so do a do a test first. Okay. Let me bring this back. And like I said, um, if if you can't find nagaimo or um, the whole slimy thing doesn't work for you, it, it doesn't taste slimy when you actually have the end product. Um, but obviously, it's slimy looking and kind of odd looking while you're making it. So um, if it's not your kind of thing, then leave it out. It will taste just fine without the nagaimo in it. Um, it just might not have as much lift. So let me go wash my hands. I'll be right back. And now that we're back, we're going to mix all this together and then add some water. Um, I'm, I don't know, with things like this, like things like even like pancakes when I make it at home, I tend not to go by actual solid measurements. Um, I have the half cup of flour. That's kind of your base measurement. And uh, the amount of water you're going to add is going to depend on how thick the consistency of the batter is going to get. So follow along. One of the reasons why um, <laughs> So let me backtrack. When you have a, you know, you, when you have a skin sensitivity, something like nagaimo, it makes it, you know, kind of sad if you can't use it in Japanese cooking. Cooking if you are Japanese, and that's one of the reasons why um, with okonomiyaki powder, um, you can actually buy just okonomiyaki um, base powder that has all of these ingredients in it at your local Japanese market or Asian market. Um, it will actually say on the on the bag of what looks like flour, it'll just say okonomiyaki powder, okonomiyaki mix. 
Um, and that basically has all of the ingredients that I'm making here, including dehydrated nagaimo. So, because it's dehydrated, like you won't have to worry about the, the skin reaction issues, I guess. And so you're gonna just get this to a consistency of a, like a standard pancake batter. And because of the, the slimy nature of the nagaimo, it's going to do this thing where it doesn't really thread like a pancake batter. It's more kind of like, you know, slimy and clumpy. Um, but again, just a reminder, none of the sliminess is going to end up in the end product. It's technically a tuber. It's a potato. Um, when it's all cooked together, you won't be like chewing on it and going, oh, this is slimy. There's none of that. So that's kind of the consistency that we're going for. And then we are going to actually put um, plastic wrap on this and put this in the fridge for anywhere from three hours to overnight. A lot of the, the traditional okonomiyaki restaurants um, will actually make batches of this for the next day. So um, let me go ahead and put this in the fridge. And then when uh, it's been about three hours, I'll bring it back out. So now it's been three hours and my okonomiyaki base batter has sat for about, um, about three hours. And to that, we're going to add one egg. Let me see how I can do this. <laughs> And we're also going to add uh, this thing, which is tenkasu, which you can kind of tell by looking at it. Um, it's a, so when you make tempura, you have these like little batter drippings that end up all over the, the oil that's separated from like the shrimp or the vegetables. That's what tenkasu is. And so it's basically just kind of little fried dough balls, but you could also add it to things like okonomiyaki to give it a little bit more body and lift. That's not very heavy. So I'm going to add just a handful. Just a little bit more. Goes in there. And then you can add additional flavorings if you'd like. You can add like cut up um, uh, pickled ginger and things like that to this. I tend not to because I tend to have those as an on like a top, like a like a topper. So just gonna mix all this together. When you go to a lot of okonomiyaki restaurants, what they'll bring you is once you've made your order, like I would like one with shrimp or I would like one with pork belly. Um, what they will do is they will bring you a bowl um, with the batter and a raw egg and the tenkasu goes in there and then you're supposed to kind of mix it up at your table and grill it at the, um, the hot plate that's in front of you. So it's one of those like, make yourself and eat kind of meals. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more tenkasu to this. And then this goes over uh, your cut up cabbage. So depending on the, on the okonomiyaki restaurant, again, 
kind of like gyoza or any of these other like ramen shops in Japan, every single um, okonomiyaki restaurant is a little bit different. Some place will have it with just shredded, uh, like almost like coleslaw cabbage, like long thin strands. Some place will have it like totally minced beyond belief. Um, I like kind of like a halfway point where I, I cause I like having um, larger chunks uh, that I can kind of bite into. Um, so I like making um, like almost like little squares, I guess. Uh, so you would cut them into strips and then cut them into little bits. To that, your batter gets added. Got about like a cup and a half, almost two cups of cabbage here. So you're gonna think about uh, three quarters of a cup to a cup of cabbage per pancake, per serving. Yes. And like I said, if you don't use the nagaimo because that's not your thing, um, you may have to make a little bit of extra batter because obviously you don't have the, the extra um, couple of ounces of nagaimo fluid to add. So you may have to add a little bit of water or a little bit extra flour and water. Um, so you can just make sure that you have all of the cabbage pieces covered. And that's our base. Let me get my frying pan out and, uh, and we'll get to cooking. Okay, so we've got everything put together. We've got the frying pan ready to go. Um, so we're gonna turn this on, on like a medium low to medium heat to start. And this is a nonstick pan, but I'm going to add just a little bit of vegetable oil. As a kid, this was like one of those activities that I would do, like I would go shopping, like grocery shopping with my mom, and then on the way home, she'd be like, let's go get okonomiyaki, and then we'd go to this like little restaurant in the back alley <laughs> um, that, you know, had been around for like at least 100 years, and um, prided themselves on their okonomiyaki, and we would just go and just cook up. My favorite was always either bacon or pork belly. So we're going to add half of this mixture to the frying pan. And then the remaining half you can make for your, your date <laughs> or you can uh, put it in the fridge and cook it up the next day or um, you can go ahead and make it up and then you can kind of reheat it in the microwave, although, you know, like most food, fresh is always best. So I tend to just kind of keep the, the remaining batter in the fridge and then use it the following day as like a little midday snack. So this is starting to puff up. And we're going to add my favorite, which is bacon. <laughs> um, compared to thick bacon, I would recommend using like a thinner bacon here or a pork belly that's like really thinly sliced. You're not really making a bacon dish. You're just using it as a flavoring, so. Two slices, seems to work. I 
I'm going to put a lid on this so it can continue to puff up just a little bit. And get our plate ready for eating. <laughs> Really, okonomiyaki is one of those dishes that is just, it's the perfect little evening snack. Um, it's healthy, it's got tons of fiber because of the cabbage. It doesn't actually have a lot of flour because um, we're using half a cup of flour for two pancakes here, so we're, it's only a quarter of a cup of flour per serving. Um, and then there's another yimo that helps puff it up. So it's relatively healthy, you know, compared to like, you know, getting yourself like a donut or something like that. Yeah, it's starting to puff up really, really well. Almost ready. Oh, I can smell the dashi in there, the dashi broth. Um, the nagaimo doesn't really have a scent. Um, it's kind of a very neutral flavor. It's really just about texture and about adding lift to the, to the okonomiyaki. Um, but, you know, I will always be open to having it over a bowl of rice with just the, the nagaimo on top, a little bit of soy sauce, a little wasabi, it's very good. And it's also really good, kind of like sliced up really thin and turned into like a matchstick salad, it's really good for that too. We've got to we'll turn it down just a little bit more because we've got bacon cooking. There are two major kinds of okonomiyaki in Japan. There is Osaka style and Hiroshima style. And Osaka style is the kind that you get kind of on like the rest of the mainland in Japan. So it kind of travels all the way up to Tokyo and then beyond, um, which is this. It's a batter and cabbage mixed together, kind of like puffy pancake with, you know, some sort of meat on top um, and then sauces. Uh, the Hiroshima style, which I promise I will do because <laughs> I don't I don't tend to make the Hiroshima style, um, but it's really, really good. It's like a triple decker okonomiyaki where it's kind of got a battered base and then it's got a bunch of yakisoba, it's got noodles in the middle of it, and then it's got like a really thin kind of like egg crepe that gets placed on top. So like the egg is in, in the Osaka style is mixed into the batter, whereas with the Hiroshima style it's left as like a little crepe that you put on top. Um, both have the same kind of sauces that you put on top of the entire thing before you eat it, but the texture is different. And with Japanese cuisine, it's not just about flavor. A lot of the food really does concentrate on like uh, mouthfeel and how things, you know, you have a little bit of crunchy, you have a little bit of like puffy. Um, so having the two different kinds of okonomiyaki make for kind of like a fun party night. <laughs> Turn that off. And put this on the plate. Ooh. Hot. <laughs> so to the top of this is your traditional kind of okonomiyaki garnishments. Um, you can go and buy store-bought sauce that just that is specific to okonomiyaki but i found that like most japanese homes don't keep multiple sauces that taste kind of similar when you know our staple um bulldog sauce which is the sauce that you would use for like tonkatsu it's what you would use for okonomiyaki it's not quite what you would use for yakisoba but it's pretty close um in terms of like flavors like a kind of like a spicy spicy but not not hot not like chili hot um it's a peppery uh i don't know teriyaki sauce but i don't really like how i'm going to call it a teriyaki sauce because it's not 
<laughs> um, but it's one of bulldog sauce is a staple of Japanese um, home cooks and has been around forever. <laughs> so this just gets poured right on top. You can be creative here. And then we're going to add Japanese Kewpie mayo, which is very different from American mayo. Kewpie mayo has more egg yolks in it, um, so it has a much more kind of heavier, kind of creamy texture. It's less oily tasting. Um, yeah, if you don't like traditional American uh, or European mayo, you might want to give Japanese Kewpie a try. You might find that you like this. So, um, and the fun thing about Kewpie mayo bottles, whether it's this like this little tiny one or the regular kitchen size, like the big one, is you actually have a squirt no nozzle uh, that's like a thin squirt nozzle for like decorating. And then it's got <laughs> this star shaped kind of like a piping bag. Um, we don't, I don't tend to use it for okonomiyaki, but just to show you, it's, it becomes more of like a dollop. So, but um, we're going to use the thin size today. I'm going to go opposite the bulldog sauce. And this is just kind of more how it's traditionally served. You know, it's kind of decorative. <laughs> but you're also not smearing mayo and bulldog sauce all over your okonomiyaki. Uh, to that, we're going to add wasa, which is just green. Um, it's like dried green seaweed. It's just an extra little flavor. And again, you don't want to be super heavy handed with that. It's just a little sprinkling. And then the thing that seems to bug people in the States so, so much is uh, dry shaved bonito flakes. Um, because when the heat hits it, because it's such a, you know, these are paper, paper thin slices of bonito mackerel. Um, that have been cured, almost like a jerky, and then you like shred it. Um, but it is a very fine kind of, you know, flaky thing that when the heat hits it, it actually kind of dances. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and, you know, people, people are scared of things that they don't know. And so a lot of people, when they first see this, they're like, ooh, what is that? Is that like something that's alive? Um, ooh, gross. And there's, and there's that kind of like hesitation, but honestly, it's just dried fish flakes. <laughs> um, you can also add some pickled red ginger to this, which is like a salted ginger, not the kind of ginger you get like a sushi shop. Um, it's salty, not sweet. Um, I, I'm okay with that for today. So, I get a mouthful of this. Hmm. Slightly crunchy because of the cabbage. The, the pork belly adds this like little bit of porky flavor. Hmm. And this is like a snack that you would make for like kids all the way to like having a party at home. Like there's like okonomiyaki parties that you would do at home and like make your friends over. Um, as well as like going to some restaurants that specialize in okonomiyaki. Um, if there is no okonomiyaki specific restaurant in your town, which probably in the States there aren't that many, um, look at your local izakaya, your local Japanese pub. Usually they have okonomiyaki as an appetizer option on their menu. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. I really hope you try this. It's so easy to make. Um, even if, don't, if, the, if you don't use the naga emo, it's still super delicious. Um, and uh, I'm going to go and finish this up. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for watching another episode of Nakatomi Test Kitchen. I'm Kelly Nakatomi. I will see you next time.